Aussie Prop Girl here and welcome to my very first prop making video. I've always loved Halloween and in 2008 I threw my very first Halloween party at my parents house with my best friend helping. Back then you couldn't buy a single Halloween decoration so I had to make everything from scratch. That gave me my love of prop making not just for Halloween parties but for any type of party. Last year's Halloween theme was the Salem Witch Museum, so of course we needed a giant cauldron. We set about making one using an exercise ball and paper mache. The whole family got involved in making the cauldron and we had so much fun. So I hope you enjoy watching. Okay guys, so we've got our ball here. I've done four layers of paper mache already and it's really, quite firm now you can't really squeeze the bowl so I'm just going to put the final layer on I think five is all it's going to need as you can see I'm not going completely over the bowl because this is going to be the rim of the cauldron and we want the top open so I'm just going to go ahead and mix up my glue so at the moment I'm just using the PVA glue from Kmart really inexpensive I'll probably need both of these bottles for one layer and we're mixing it two parts glue to one part water. I found that's the best combination. Um, I did try and use the flour method where you mix equal parts flour and water and I ended up in a big mess, ended up ripping it all off the bowl and starting again. So I'm really finding that PVA glue and water works the best. Okay, so I'm just going to mix up that glue and we'll get started. I also have my pile of newspaper ready because once you've got glue covered hands, you're not going to be want to rip your paper. It takes a little bit to mix in, so you're just mixing it in until it's all open. Here we go, and you want a runny consistency. So we want to dip in our paper, slide off the excess glue, and. I've gone down on the last layer, so this one I'm going to want to go across. And this just gives the final product a bit more strength. And smoothing it down as you go. Alright, we're letting the balloon out. I think this is hard enough now. So let's hope this comes out. What I'm doing is just kneading up the edges a little and then you're going to sit the pool noodle on top to make the rim.
put a rim on top of the cauldron and how we did that was we just used a pool noodle from Bunnings. We did get pool noodles from Kmart but they were too rigid and we couldn't bend them. But the ones from Bunnings are much, much softer. Same price, $2 each. And so we used a little bit more than once and you just make a slice with a knife down one side of the noodle and slip it over the paper mache. And as you can see here, we've just put a little join in. We need a little bit extra that we've cut off the end of this one. And we've used a heat gun to bond that together. Now we need to do is paper mache the ring. Okay, so now we've got four layers on, five layers, sorry, on the base of the cauldron. We've taken the ball out, we've put our pool noodle around, two layers over the pool noodle. We don't need as many layers on the pool noodle because we've got the foam inside there. So this is all dry, all finished. What I'm gonna do now is just give it a light sand and then I'm gonna put a clear coat varnish over it before we paint it. I want this to last more than one year because it's taken us quite a while to make. So clear coat varnish inside and outside and then spray paint over the top of that. So let's get to the fun part. So what we're using is just um, a water soluble clear coat. This is in satin finish because I didn't want anything too glossy because we're going over it with spray paint.
time to put some legs on our cauldron. So I've got some wooden furniture legs. We just picked these up at Bunnings. And my plan is to put three legs on the cauldron like this. So what I'm gonna do first is find the center of my cauldron and I'm just gonna pop a pin in there. It does indent a little bit, so I'll just pop it out. Okay, so pin in the centre. And I'm just measuring with my silver sharpie. I think I need to go about 20 centimetres out from the centre. Okay, I'm just going to glue the legs on as well, just to give it a bit more stability. I moved the legs up a bit. They were too um, wide to hold the cauldron, so I moved them in. So I have just taped up the holes and I'll paint over that when I paint the legs. Looks like little band-aids. What I've got in here is some sand, just from the kids' sand pits, and some satin silver paint. Leaving too many bars. 
in metallic charcoal. I'm going to stand back and just give this a lot. have some Duramax Rust Effects paint. 